Hey there, I'm Riskable, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build the coolest mana generating pumpkin pie farm ever! It's super easy to build and only requires two mana spreaders. Seriously! Best of all, it generates mana wicked fast. Let's get started. Let's start with a quick overview of what we're going to be building. The pumpkin pie farm is divided into four identical sections, each with pumpkins, a crop of some sort, and some sugarcane. In the center, we've got a mana pool on top of a elven mana spreader that's over a spreader turntable. The mana spreader has a resistance lens installed and is surrounded by four mana prisms each with bore warp lenses. Now let's follow that mana burst that just went out to show you how it works. The mana burst comes down here breaking any pumpkins. It gets teleported here and back down to this force relay which teleports the mana burst back down to one of these four blocks that surround this little mana pool. So the mana ends up looping around indefinitely. Right here, we've got our pumpkin pie crafting mechanism, a small little chicken farm for eggs, Ogomorillus to eat the pumpkin pies, and if you can see down there on the left, there's a mana spreader directly under that mana pool. Over here, we've got a hopper hawk that picks up the sugar cane and turns it into sugar with a crafty crate, and a feather deletion mechanism. And that's how the pumpkin pie farm works. Let's get building. To get started building my pumpkin pie farm, you're going to want to clear out a 19 block radius of space and that's pretty big uh, but it's not that big right so the first thing we want to do is in the center is dig two blocks down and put a spreader turntable there and then we're going to switch over to our wand of the forest and we're going to put this on the second speed mode which is once around every nine seconds next we're going to clear out some space around the spreader turntable and we're going to put an elven mana spreader on there make sure it's facing sideways and then we're going to put a resistance lens on there. And that will give it an enormous range of 36 blocks all around. And that's why we dig it down one is so it doesn't accidentally end up targeting some other mana spreader or mana pool elsewhere. Now we want to put down four mana prisms surrounding the mana spreader. And on each mana prism, we're going to put a bore warp lens. Now we want to build out five blocks from the mana prism, and this is going to be our pumpkin row. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to bring this down 18 blocks. So let's do that. So we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Ah, ah, ah. Now let's go ahead and clear this out. Now that we've cleared that out, we need to build a water channel. And the sugar cane is going to go right here on the right hand side and the water channel is going to go right next to that. So let's clear that out and fill it with water. Now let's hoe the dirt here to the right, well to the side of this water channel. We're going to hoe here and here and we're going to go take it all the way down. Now we're going to plant our seeds. We're going to plant regular seeds or any crop you like in this row next to the water. And to the right of that, we're going to plant the pumpkin seeds. Now, the reason why we, there's two reasons why we plant uh, a crop here. The first reason is that my, vanilla Minecraft mechanics make crops mean that crops grow faster if there is farmland next to them and if it's for, you know, watered, far, uh, moist farmland. So, believe it or not, having this as farmland, even though there's a crop growing in it, will make this pumpkin stem uh, produce pumpkins faster. So, I'm going to go ahead and fill that out with seeds. And now I'm going to put down the sugar cane. Now, so we don't accidentally build where our crops are going to be growing, let's just frame out this field a little bit. Okay, so we know we can't build in this direction, this direction, or in this direction over here. So a good place to put our mana pool would be right here. And we're going to put it right on top of that mana spreader, just like that. And we're going to place our Gorma Relist nearby and it's going to bind to this Mana Spreader, but we'll take care of that in a minute. The next thing we need to do is just block around this Mana Spreader a bit. And I like to put Living Rock slabs on top here, but you can just use regular Living Rock. I just found this looks cooler. <laughs> That's really all it boils down to. And we're going to give this a spark. Now, these are the blocks where our Force Relays are going to be bound to for the final legs of our uh, Mana Burst, so they're just going to end up right back in this pool. Now we need to give our regular Mana Spreader uh, diluted mana pool 
and that diluted monopole needs a spark, and that spark needs a dominant augment. So if we give this monopole some mana to start things off, that should fill up this monopole over here. Excellent. Now let's make our chicken farm. It doesn't really matter where it goes, it just needs to go somewhere nearby. Uh, here's a good spot. You don't need that many chickens. Uh, 20 is probably fine. 30, be a little bit safer. I'm just going to spam them. And I also like to cover up my chicken farm. Now I need to figure out where we're going to be putting down our mechanism that converts sugarcane into sugar. Here's a good spot. I like to build it up at the air a little bit. And we're going to put a 1x1 crafting pattern on there. And an item frame on the side here with some sugarcane in it. So if we drop any sugarcane now, it should get automatically picked up by a hopper hawk. So we're going to place it right there and turned into sugar. Awesome. Another thing I like to do is use this hopper hawk to get rid of feathers because the feathers can uh, and will produce a lot of lag after a while, especially on slower machines. And the way we delete those feathers is with a petal apothecary filled with some lava. And then we put an open crate right over that. This is going to delete that sugar. That's okay. And we're going to put an item frame on there with a feather in it. So any feathers that get dropped should get picked up by the hopper hawk, put in the open crate, and then dropped into lava to be gone forever. Awesome. Now's a good time to put down our force relays and bind our blocks. So let's go ahead and do that. Our force relays are going to go down here to the end, and they're going to go right here in our pumpkin row here. And these are going to be bound to the block over here that we're going to place. And I'll right click on that. So now when a mana burst comes out, it should go down to the force relay, come across here, and get picked up by another force relay. And the mana burst is going to be coming in in this direction. So we want to bind this force relay to this slab next to this mana pool. So it should go right into the air. Last thing we want to do is put down a mana pool, diluted mana pool is good, so that we have a target for the mana burst to go into. Wasn't, didn't have enough juice to make it the whole way. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, and I noticed a little problem here. You see that this uh, pumpkin stem grew this direction. We don't want that. So a quick solution to that is just put a block there. And I, I, th I think I accidentally deleted that uh, <laughs> or removed that uh, block. It's gonna, we're going to have that problem over here, here, and here. So I'll just fill those in so we don't have that problem again. Now let's put down the mechanism that's going to craft our pumpkin pies. We'll start by putting down the gormorillas. Put it right there. And on top of that, we're going to put a crafty crate so it will drop our pumpkin pies right onto that Gormorillus. We're going to put a 3 by one crafting pattern on this crafty crate and an item frame on the crafty crate as well. And in that item frame, we need to put some item that we know will never drop nearby, and that's just to prevent our hopper hawk from picking up items and putting it directly into the crafty crate. Next, we're going to put three droppers surrounding the other sides. Oop. Want them facing away for now. Come on. There we go. And we're going to fix their direction by rotating them with the Wand of the Forest. Just shift right click twice, and that should rotate them around to face the crafty crate. Now we're going to put three hoppers on top of these dispensers. Droppers, rather. They're droppers, not dispensers. And on these, we're going to be putting item frames that have our three pumpkin pie ingredients, which are eggs, sugar, and pumpkins. Now we're going to put a floating hopper hawk right on top of this. So it should automatically pick up any pumpkins, sugar, or eggs that are nearby and put them into these droppers. Now to automate the creation of the pies, we're going to need to place some redstone all surrounding it here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna put a hovering hourglass right behind this hopper and four bits of redstone here on either sides. And we're going to put eight pieces of sand in that hovering hourglass. And that should be just long enough so that there's plenty of time for that Gormorillus down there to digest our pumpkin pies. And we should see the first one come out just now. There we go. And it should have automatically bound to this mana spreader down here. We should see a mana burst. Excellent. And that right there is the gist of the pumpkin pie farm. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of this uh, and so you can see what it looks like. Okay, I've gone ahead and filled out the rest of the farm as you can see. Let's just uh, watch it work for a moment.
All right, let's go take a look at that mount pool. See how we're doing. Oh yeah, it's gonna fill up pretty fast, especially once it gets really going. Uh, and if you really want to speed it up, uh, start out with a, a little bit more sugar cane. Just you know, feed any sugar cane you've got to it, uh, and pumpkins, and it, you should get a, a pretty full up mana pool pretty quickly. Now, if you don't want to use that much space uh, for your pumpkin pie farm, there are there is an alternative layout. If you don't mind using a few extra mana spreaders, you can actually make one that produces pumpkins a bit faster, like this. Uh, with two lanes of pumpkins, like so, and you could just put a little, you know, double sugar cane, double layered sugar cane farm on the side here, and here I have a kind of enormous chicken farm. You don't need it that big, uh, and you can ignore this. This is just experimentation over here, but I find this layout works well as well. If you don't want to take up as much uh, space horizontally, it does work uh, pretty well. Uh, it takes up space vertically instead of horizontally, and you can build it as tall as you want. Of course, if you've got loads and loads of space, you can actually just build uh, more layers of my of that existing pumpkin farm uh, right on top of each other, and it will continue to operate uh, just like it does now. Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to leave a like or comment.